today we're going to be talking about a species that probably most of you guys have at least encountered at some point or maybe seen in the shops or something like that. Um, we're talking about the gilback, also known as a Cape Salmon, uh, Teraglin, which is a name I've never heard before but apparently elsewhere in the world is called that. Um, a scientific name is a Tractosian Aquidens, a uh, bit of a tongue twister there. So the gilback, uh, quite a long, almost tubular type body. So thinking like a pipe, except with the flattened sides. They've got yellowish dusky type fins, so it's a sort of a dirty yellow kind of color on the fins. Very, very large mouth for their size, medium kind of eyes, very similar to a cob, but much more elongated, not with that hump just behind the head. And as you can uh, guess by the name, Gelbeck, uh, yellow mouth from, for our non-Afrikaners, your, the mouth and the inside of the gills, so if you open up his mouth again, is a very, very bright yellow color. Um, and that's obviously where it gets its name from. Similar to a cob in that yellowy color, but a lot more prominent. Now, it's got a very large tail for its size. It's slightly concave, so the tail's almost shaped like your hand like that, except very equal both top and bottom, but not extremely lunate like that. They are quite a, a predominant shoaling species. They like to hunt together, obviously for safety, easier hunting, that kind of thing. Um, they are a migratory species, so they move up the coast from the Western Cape to the Eastern Cape and this movement's actually done with the sardine. So as we're speaking now with the big sardine run we're having, the gilback are moving up the coast. So obviously a very prominent uh, feeding supply with them, but they're coming up here to spawn. Uh, that spawning that they've done is done off the KZN coast. So the population will obviously live off uh, down the Western Cape and then move up here to congregate together once all of them have matured and they can come and breed and spawn off here. In terms of sizes, your they get to about 1.2 meters uh, and that's about 14 kilos yeah about 14 kilos of fish there, thereabouts um, the SA record is 14.9 kilos and that's a fish of about nine years old so fairly quick growing um, not too not too slow growing and because they shoal up together they spawn in mass so they they are luckily a species that's able to, to reproduce in large numbers. The downfall is with them congregating. Like any of your other species that congregate, they're very, very sensitive to overfishing. So because you know the hillback are gonna be in a school of say 500 strong, you can go drop a bait in there and you know you're gonna get a fish. And the guys have been known to, I mean, there are lots of court cases against people that have caught hundreds and hundreds of tons of, uh, of hillback, but the bigger problem is even the recreational guys, you're allowed two per day. Now, if you drop a bait, anyone who's fished for hillback will know, you're gonna lose fish to sharks. The sharks, as soon as you start catching fish, clue in on that and they come and start taxing you. That's why they call the tax man. Now, theoretically, if you've caught, pulled up and you've been taxed, you've caught two fish, they've both been cut in half, that's your quota for the day. Now, most people will know, you get that, they're gonna chuck it over the side and carry on fishing until they get two whole fish. So your two per day is very often the abuse of hillback when you only end up, you end up with two fish, but you've actually taken out of the ecosystem, you've taken six or maybe even 20 fish just to get your two. So an appeal to you guys, as the, the conservationist in me will ask you, please, if you do get taxed on two fish, that is your two fish limit. So keep what's left. And if there are sharks in the area, rather move away, they, they're gonna feed and they're gonna carry on feeding, carry on taxing your fish. So. If you do get sharks in the area, rather just move off. In terms of maturity and whatnot, they mature at 60 centimeters, so that's why they've set the, the, the size limit at, at 60 and two per person. Um, the juveniles are gonna eat all your little planktonic organisms as soon as they grow up, and your adults, mouse bunker, sardines, and mackerel are the three key things that they, key fish that they feed on. They do also eat squid every now and again, but obviously not that common up here, so. They really are piscable. They feed on fish. How are you going to be catching them? A KP is king. It always will be for bottom fish because of the torque ratio and the, the one to one. You just you're able to crank up fish even under heavy loads. Uh, for me, nine inch KP, hundred plus pound braid. So our hundred pound J braid, nine inch KP, and the the Poseidon Hillback ski. That's perfect. You're never going to need anything more than that. 
Um, hooks wise, the debate goes in and out depending on who you talk to whether a J-hook works better. So the guys like using a mustard Kendall uh, about a nino, that's the most popular hook for them. But as soon as you start fishing with a circle hook for them, you'll find you're actually hooking a lot more fish. So with a circle, the nice thing is with bottom fishing, just set it, or you got your, your rod set, winding, you feel that bite, you just wind into him and it, it hooks him straight away. So there's no need to strike, no need to give anything like that. It's, it's actually a very nice way of fishing for them. So yeah, uh, Kelbeck, bit of a controversial species. Um, very, very nice eating species. So obviously that leads them to to be targeted a lot by people and that obviously brings in the overfishing. Um, but yeah, very, very nice species to catch. Strong fighting, a little bit weak for their size, but still a good pull on a rod. Um, and yeah, available to pretty much anyone. So go out, go catch a hillback and maybe take one over for the pan. Cheers.